Hey there, welcome to part 17. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to improve quality of life by starting app in programmatically. If you're following my channel, you already saw a video like that. Uh, but in today's video, I'm going to show you how to integrate this into our existing framework so we have a complete package. So we're gonna start by creating two private static variables that are going to hold a string. And this are going to be the locations, the executables of Node.js and Appium.js. And if you followed my videos from the beginning, you know how, like when, when we installed, um, when we installed Appium, uh, we set the uh, the environment variables for uh, for Appium Home, and we do have Node.js executable within our app in home. If you haven't, however, you will need to find where you have uh, your app in installed and you need to find the Node.js executable. You, you might even have this separately. Uh, it kind of depends on how you installed it. And then you need to find your uh, app in JS, which is within your uh, app in folder as well. So <clears throat> With that said, technically if you started watching my videos from the beginning, you should already have this set, so there, is, there should be no problem. So we're going to say, oops, not Android, we interested in Appium Home, and then we're going to append node.exe, is it node.exe or node.js.exe? Yeah, no exe. Okay. I'm gonna append that. Then we need to create another private static variable to hold our Appium JS location. So again we're gonna reference, we're gonna tell our system to get environment for Appium home. And then we're gonna append to this. And this guy is in node modules appium bin so we'll just go ahead and copy this into here also we're going to replace the two backslashes with one forward slash so this path is compatible with other operating systems and not just not just windows all right now that we have that we can go ahead and start. Um, well, actually, let's create one more variable, and this is going to be private as well. This is going to be private static, and this guy is going to hold driver service, and we're going to call it service, and just leave it null by default. <clears throat> so now we can go ahead and start creating our method. Uh, the method is also going to be private. Uh, if you notice, we're creating everything as private. And that's because this, um, anything that we create right now is not going to be a reference from anywhere else but our driver manager. And the reason we're creating this method as static is because our create driver method is static. And to call, um, to be able to call this method from driver, from within create driver manager, we need to have it static as well. And this method is going to return a driver service. Call it create service, and we're gonna reference our service variable that we created, and we're gonna say we're gonna assign a value to it. So it's gonna be equal to Appium Service Builder. So in this method, we're gonna build our service, and we're gonna return that service to uh, whatever uh, calls on this method. But the first thing we need to make sure. Uh, that we tell uh, this uh, service builder is where to find Node.js and where to find AppMJS. So we're going to say using driver executable, and this is a file, Node.js, <coughs> and then with AppMJS, this is also a file, 
so now our builder knows where to find those things next thing we need to do we need to specify which IP we want to start this service on so to do that we kinda need to do it similarly as as we do it in our create driver we're passing host in here <coughs> so our driver knows where to start so this is kind of what we need to do in our create service method as well we need to access this information right now we can't access this information because it's only available to a create driver method and it's only available locally so we need to create another variable let's create another private static variable is going to hold a string and this is going to be device ID now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna assign a value to device ID so this is now ac accessible uh, from within um, from within driver manager to any class or any method from within driver manager so here we can reference our host method and pass in device ID now that will return to us a URL right so it returns a URL and URL will contain this string so but we need just this part we need the IP so we need to parse this URL first thing we're gonna do is we can convert this to a string and then let's split this by semicolon and let's take the second part, or second slice, and then let's uh, replace the two forward slashes with nothing. Alright, so that will remove the forward slashes and leave us with the IP. Now, next thing we need to specify is the port. So there's two ways to do that two ways to do the port so uh, you can say you want to use any free port or you can use a specific port in our case we're going to use a specific port because we specify a specific port for our host so that's why we're going to do that now host we're going to access uh, this information through host again also convert it to string also split by semicolon this time we're going to take the second or the third slice and this time we're going to replace this with nothing as well now once we're done we're gonna build our service and we're going to return our service Now we see we have some exceptions. Let's add this to method signature by pressing Alt Enter Enter. We got another warning here. And this must be the port must be an integer. So integer dot parse int should fix this issue. Okay. Uh, now that we have our service created we can go ahead and add this to our create driver method and kill driver method and the way we're gonna do that is just add it in here so we're gonna say create service and then start and then when we want to do quit or when we want to kill the driver the last thing we're gonna do is kill the service so it's gonna be the last line in our code here and we're going to reference our service uh, variable and I'm going to say stop. So that should kill our service. Now, there's one more thing um, that I still haven't mentioned. You can add more custom arguments to create service, uh, to, like in between this stuff. Like if you want to add any of these custom arguments or flags whatever uh, into the service builder you can do that and let's take a look at how you can do that let me just remove this so I'm just gonna copy and paste this uh, so I don't waste time 
So we're going to create in constants. We're going to go ahead and create a class that's going to be called arg. And inside this class, we're going to implement our arguments. So make sure uh, you change the class to enum and make sure that it implements service argument. And then make sure you override get argument method, which you must have, and it must return an argument. And that argument should be assigned from your, uh, which we call, uh, from your constructor. And then this are your arguments. So if you want to add more arguments, all you do is just add stuff like this into here. So I don't know, dummy arg example. And then you do whatever in here. You want to add another argument, you do it this way as well. So <clears throat> now let me open this thing again. Where is it? So for example, we want to add log level we already have, um, local time zone. Okay, let's see. We want to have local time zone. So we can replace that with this and we have a new argument that we can use. Now the way you use it is back here we're going to say uh, with argument and then we're going to reference our arg class and we're going to add the argument that we need to have in there. For example, uh, timeout. Okay, If we want to set timeout to two minutes, meaning that if for two minutes uh, we don't send any calls to our um, to our Appium service, it's going to shut down. Uh, by default, I think it's a minute or 45 seconds, something like that. It's not very long. So if you don't send um, any comments uh, to Appium service, uh, it's going to shut down. Uh, so if you want to increase that. Uh, you can add the timeout and you can make this timeout anything you want. Um, so let's go ahead and run. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the runner and run our driver, uh, create driver uh, method and see what happens. Now it should finish without any problems. So that's what I expect. And right now we are going to see uh, some logs from uh, from Appium itself because we're starting it programmatically so we're going to see its logs here. You can see info. All of this is coming from the Appium so we used to see that in the console in the terminal uh, but now we we see it in our console in IntelliJ. So it started Everything, everything was started. It uh, created driver. Well, first it created the servers, right? Because we see all this stuff going. Uh, then it uh, created driver on the device. It uploaded the unlock APK, and then it killed the session. So everything was done successfully. Everything we expected, because that's all we did. Created driver and killed the driver. So let me show you one more thing. Um, for timeout, right? The argument that we passed in uh, for timeout. If you are creating your custom arguments, um, and you want to make sure that they registered, uh, make sure to check this line. Okay, for timeout, our timeout did register because we see this. Now, if you don't want to see this logs, right? If you don't want to see the logs. Uh, for info, I would actually recommend to turn this guys off. And the way to do that, again, we're going to go into our create service and we're going to say with argument, we're going to go to our arg class and we're going to reference the log level and we're going to set this log level to warning. 
meaning that if you get an error or a warning uh, you will see some output but if it's a uh, if it's debug or info you will not see this output so if it's something important it's going to tell you if it's nothing important then it's not going to tell you if this logs are not enough to see an issue you can always come here and just comment this line out and then you will see this logs again so let's run this with the new log level for warning and see what happens we should not see anything uh, from Appium at this point unless there is some problem Alright, so create a driver successfully and kill the driver successfully and we got rid of all those logs from Appium itself. Alright guys, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you haven't and share. Uh, if you have any requests for the videos, please let me know because I think this, is, this was my uh, last video until I find something else to talk about and show you. So if you haven't uh, seen what you wanted to see in this series, please do let me know and if I do get enough requests, I will go ahead and create a video for you. Again guys, thank you for watching, take care.